Fantastic. Uh, well, following Tim's uh, very kind words, uh, my name is Adrian Float. I am the uh, MD of, uh, of Seralto. And uh, for those of you not familiar with Seralto, we are, we're the feature-based payment guys. So what does that mean? It basically means that we blend together uh, a software as a service capability with a payments processing business um, and really sort of tie that together with a collaboration framework. Now, that collaboration framework is really what sets us apart. And I, I, I'm gonna demonstrate that today. So I'm, I'm gonna hopefully not get the Microsoft uh, blue screen of death when I run through my demo, but um, I guess the short and skinny of, of the, the differentiation point is when we look at how a payment occurs, it's a whole bunch of things that go in before there is the payment event. And traditional financial services players are only really involved in that processing part. For us, with our software background, we've got the capacity to create transactions. So we're all about owning the life cycle from quote through to payment and all the steps in between from how we invoice, fulfill, et cetera. So we've got a whole bunch of, of software capability that allows our customers to digitize their business. Now, well, then when it comes to collaboration, that's where we really come into our own because a little bit like WhatsApp or uh, other um, community-based or social-based communications platforms, um, we are the same thing in that our customer invites their trading partner. And that event is our most successful uh, point of acquisition of customers. And I suppose where we see ourselves really differentiating and accelerating our, our growth capacity. So in, in our world, um, that invitation is all about aligning our, uh, our customers' need with getting paid what they're owed on time. Now, given we've got a reasonably economical um, view on time, I'm, I'm going to just sort of skip through a couple of slides. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the quarter, um, look, we're in what we would call a managed growth phase. So we don't want to turn the, um, the boosters on quite yet, but we're not too far away. Uh, we've signed some agreements um, in the uh, back end of, of 2020, which um, give us capacity to really focus on our business payment suite. Now to that end, um, we have completed our first uh, round of testing, made some announcements. I'm very much looking forward to making announcements around our second phase of testing. As soon as we're out of our uh, prospectus period, those will be um, uh, available to all. So, but suffice to say, um, when I look at, uh, at how we make money, we, we ultimately blend together the revenue lines that um, come out of, if you like, the SaaS side of things. So looking at a business's application. So if we look at a retailer, retailers typically are going to need the capacity to sell over the counter. They're gonna need the capacity to sell online. They're going to need to integrate those outcomes into their financials. They're going to need to obviously take payments on both of those mediums. And depending on the nature of that business, they will also need to manage inventories, manage their procurement, goods inwards and all those processes. So we're able to, able to offer a retailer a complete turnkey stack that does the transaction formation and, and then moves on into um, the way obviously they get paid. Now, looking at that collaboration, the great thing about our business is when we then turn around and start talking procurement, we're now talking about how a retailer sources its inventory or manages its range. And that's really where we've got a wholesale or manufacturer engagement. And again, just like um, uh, any business, the, the, as you move down the, the, uh, the value chain, transaction sizes get bigger and more uh, data points become uh, more important. So in the wholesale manufacturing space, 100% inventory is critical. There's no chance that inventory is not critical. Um, but managing debt and debt exposure becomes really critical. And one of the things that I'm going to demonstrate today is the way in which we deliver permissive access for a customer to their, their supplier's general ledger and actually connect those two things together. Now, um, ultimately, when we look at com competition, what we're doing is saying to a customer, it costs you X dollars a month for your software. It costs you Y dollars a month for your payments. And, when they, and then we, we sit as, find ourselves with the opportunity to, to be able to, to tweak a deal whereby we're delivering a compelling ROI, 
We're delivering high value business outcomes, but we're utilizing our strengths to outcompete the software industry who can't rely on good payments margins and the, finance, the financial services industry who can't do the rest of the transaction formation. And that so far has stood us in very good stead. Uh, it has allowed us to secure those uh, BPSP, BPA agreements. And as I said before, we are very pleased with how we stand now in terms of our testing outcomes. And as soon as it is humanly possible, we will be providing feedback. And a firm launch date um, around these commercial services. Uh, I guess moving forwards, one of the things, and I'll talk to this a little bit after our demonstration, where we are going to be focusing our, uh, our spender suite is in bill presentment. Now, the bill presentment space, traditionally very one-sided, the billing platforms are all about providing, uh, if you like, manageable data sets to the, to the supplier or the merchant. Uh, and they, they really do have fantastic strength when you've got um, lots of customers paying you the same amount of money. Doing those, those reconciliations and allocations manually is super hard to do. However, we've reimagined the way that bill presentment can work. We're providing a single conduit where uh, invoice and supply can be consolidated. The traditional bill presentment solution doesn't have to just be about your utility bill. It can be about any bill. Now, great thing for us is we're allowing you to pay multiple transactions in a single, uh, or multiple invoices in a single payment. Uh, we're allowing you, instead of existing systems that take you down two paths, one when you wanna pay you know, via your internet banking or from your bank account, and one when you wanna pay from your credit card, our platform allows you to select your preferred payment method and save it. And then uh, continually use either of those options. So one implementation gives you the ability to do both scenarios in an online world. Uh, obviously, we can settle faster. So the traditional bill presentment platforms settle in T plus two days, uh, or sometimes T plus three, we're able to offer customers immediate settlement uh, for a fee. Um, payment processing fees, thanks to those BPSP and BPA agreements, we've got extremely sharp pricing and strategic uh, rates, which allow us to, for want of a better term, run with the big boys and price ourselves extremely competitive, competitively for volume-based transactions. The one thing which people often forget though, in traditional bill presentment, is the customer must manually identify themselves. And what that means is they're typically copying and pasting data or typing data in from the invoice. So if you think about your Telstra bill, you're copying the bill number, you're copying the reference number. And those things, because we're human beings, are prone to error. And you're talking anything up to 5% of the time, those transactions actually fail because of poor identification. Now, as you'll see in a moment when I run my demonstration, we've solved that problem of customer supplier collaboration uh, through our invitation process and our security models. So there is no errors when transactions process and touch wood, I don't uh, hit any hurdles when I do my demo. So without further ado, I think I've, I'm about half time. Um, I'm gonna give you a bit of a demo. I'm, going to, I'm not gonna to talk too much about my spender. You can grab this deck uh, off the ASX, or you can run, th you, you can also go and, um, you know, see me present it in full. Uh, so let's just do a demo. Just gonna change my screen share. Got visibility? I'm hoping that's a yes. I will crack on. I'll assume yes without hearing the no. Um, so, so what I've got here is a demonstration that's set up uh, using zero as the back end for the supplier. And what you can see is there's um, five transactions there totaling $6,450 owing. Now, in the spender platform, uh, the, the stack actually collaborates backwards and forwards with the financial system. It doesn't need to be zero. I'm just using it for simplicity because from my perspective, Zero has done a magnificent job at delivering you know, high value uh, services to their customers. So here I am looking at exactly the same accounts receivable ledger 
I can see exactly the same data set. And if I needed to or wanted to, I could actually take a payment over the phone or we've got a version where reps can take payment in field and see exactly the same uh, accounts receivable view. But where it starts to really come to its own is when I, I change and I move to uh, this, this sort of full rich environment where I've now got those bills being presented to me, but from the customer's perspective. Now, essentially what's happened here is the supplier being establishment has given permission to its customer to see the general ledger in a very controlled manner. And the way that the invitation process works is a bunch of different security things, but ultimately what we're doing is forcing the customer to, uh, to confirm that they own the bank account and the credit card through which they're paying. And, and that's a, a key step. So we're really focused on fraud prevention. Now let's just assume I wanna pay. Um, what I'm gonna do is hit the pay now button. And you can see there that the software is immediately asking me to select the invoices I wanna pay. So as I select invoices down here, the total's changing. And in this particular example, uh, the surcharging is being turned off. Now, surcharging is essentially where the customer picks up the fee and we pass that on. Now, the nice thing about these services is that you can determine who's paying the fees and where. Now, I'm going to pay all of these invoices in a single transaction. Uh, and what we're gonna see is, we're gonna see, in a moment, my financial system actually completely update. So as I pay that transaction, going off, hitting the, hitting the, the, um, the visa stack, waiting for that payment event to occur. And touch wood, my wife hasn't spent too much money, which success. Now, as you would expect, um, we generate remittance advice data. We share that content um, in real time between the two financial systems. We get a complete manifest of what was paid, but unlike traditional merchant services where you're processing payments, when that transaction or those payments, that $6,546.75 hits the bank account, we actually will deposit $2,000, $2,500, $1,000, $500, et cetera. Now, for any piece of software using an automated uh, bank feed, that means reconciliation is one touch. For, for businesses reconciling manually, they can easily identify each transaction because the transactions are identified on the bank statement as funds deposit, as opposed to existing services where I just receive six and a half grand and have to go and manually search, find and allocate those invoices. So moreover, um, when I actually come on the other side of the equation, uh, so I'm gonna go back to my Safari view. Um, as I actually click here, um, I've still I've got no money owing. So the, the entire transaction is being completed and effectively that conversation can be a debt collection call where the accounts receivable clerk is calling the accounts payable clerk of the customer and saying, hey, you know what? You owe us some money, please pay. Now, it goes a step further than that. We actually see the entire transaction then uh, update our zero financials in line. So when I come back over here, what I'm expecting to see is all of those invoices will disappear, which basically means we've connected, as luck would have it, that just as he says, it's gonna, they're gonna disappear. I'll give it one more second to, uh, to conclude its task, but, um, but basically the, the outcome there will update all of those invoices as paid and they're completely move, removed from the accounts receivable ledger. So what we've done then is connect the um, accounts payable on the customer side to the accounts receivable on the supply side to the financial team inside the supply line and everyone's got the same um, version of the truth as it were. First time that's happened to me, didn't get the, didn't get the uh, round of applause, but um, yeah. At that point, I've probably got about two more seconds of, uh, of slide to talk to. Um, 
So I'll just jump back to my deck quickly and just talk a little bit about what's coming. Um, Tim, have I got 30 seconds? Can you indulge me or do you need to go to questions? No, you've got 30 seconds and then we'll have five minutes for questions. Fantastic. All right. Um, so look, we're in March now. It's a, obviously, it's going to be a big month for us. Big focus for us is to um, get out into the great unwashed, a, uh, an expanded customer set using our new BPSP, BPA agreements and to um, move forward with our, our acquisition of establishment, which is obviously a landmark uh, sort of thing or transaction for us as a business. It really aligns us. It brings all of our IP in house and allows us to take control of our own destiny and really leverage that, um, you know, that 20, four or five million bucks we've got in the bank um, as a result of our recent capital raise. So we'll be launching new product uh, and all of that stuff's really focused on ARPU growth um, and, and continuing on the trajectory that we have been on. Um, and uh, yeah, look, it's exciting times. It's great to, um, to be where we are and uh, have the financial resources to have a really uh, big swing at, at uh, commercializing our, uh, our technology and our dream. Thanks, Adrian. Um, a, a question here, you've got quite a few questions about, so just for clarity, the product you demoed then was App Establishment. And is that owned by Soralto or is there's a merger taking place, is there? Yeah, so the merger transaction is, uh, is upcoming. Uh, it was announced some time ago, but we've had Basically, every time we make a, a corporate adjustment, we have to basically delay the transaction. So we, we, it's been a challenging time for us, but App Establishment, uh, we license the, the spender software from them. Under this proposed acquisition, we will own everything. Okay, and, and so do you see your advantage being in, in, in your technology or in, in the price or in the cost, cost savings? Oh, look, there's a... Delivering more value at the same or less price is obviously a big part of what we do, but our software is unique in and of itself. That is what uh, allows us to stand up customers quickly. And at the minute, as we've been going through these different rounds of testing, what we've been doing is really, um, if you like, finding the 59th question. So internally we've gone, oh, we think we're gonna get 58, but invariably the market uh, teaches us new things. And that's, one of the advantages we've got at the moment is we've got the financial capacity to be able to test for an extended period of time. And that testing will pay dividends as we look down into the June quarter, September quarter, and so on and so forth. And, and how simple is it for a business to adapt this technology? Uh, look, there's a bunch of different fulfillment options. Um, it's very easy to deploy. It can go in frameless into your website. As I said, it runs mobile, so reps can run it out in the field. Um, We've actually got a, a mobile stack for that so they can be taking payments uh, when they're on the road. It runs in uh, customer service or call center mode. Um, yeah, it's, it's very easy and flexible from a deployment perspective. It's really about understanding the use case of the vertical market and then aligning a, a solution set uh, to that. And, and you've got a very large and loyal uh, retail shareholder base. You recently raised $18 million. Does that attract the attention of any institutions? Yes, mate, that was an institutional um, transaction. So look, for us, we've sort of made no secret that we want to get take supply out of the market, get institutions on the register, get them um, producing research uh, around what we do and where we're going uh, and, and maybe saying things that we're not able to say that the regulator doesn't let us say. And um, so that's that's you know, critical to that is the alignment of the IP. Institutions aren't interested in businesses that own licenses. Right, so that's part of the, the, the merger, bringing, bringing app establishment together is then when you think you attract institutional shareholders? No, we've already got institutions on the register now, quite, uh, you know, so that, that placement that we did was institutional. Right. Um, but we think that there'll be excuse me, we expect more institutions to come in over the, you know, the, the passage of time. 